Good day everybody, Nick Dingle here again for another VB.NET 2013 project video. This one we're going to be looking at making ourselves a text-based game with a built-in map editor. So if you are interested from our multi torrential arrays video, I am going to put together a fair bit of code. So we're looking at about a thousand lines of code and I'm looking, I'm predicting about four to five videos just to produce this project. This one is just going to be an introduction to the game. If you're interested in programming it, then go to the next one. At the end of every video, I'm going to include the source code of where we're up to at the end of it. And then, I mean, if you get stuck or you have a bug or you miss something, then you can put, grab the source code and continue on the next one. Now, as I said, this is going to be fairly lengthy. So if you're not even interested in doing a lot of coding, please don't even bother and just go to another project or somebody else's channel. Why not? I'd love for you to give this a go because it's a good challenge and it assumes you've got a fair bit of knowledge of classes, um, arrays, multi-dimensional arrays, properties, constructors, all that kind of stuff because I'm going to put all that into play here. It's a fair bit of work. So anyway, without further ado, I'm going to show you what this thing looks like. I've set it up so it starts in editor mode for the moment so you'll see load level, new level, go to game and exit. So. For the moment, let's have a look at what loading a level looks like. Level 0 is my main one, so I'm going to type in 0. And this is what the level editor looks like. So you've got the coordinates you're currently standing in, you've got the name of the room, you've got the description which shows when the player is standing in the room. You've also got what walls are blocked. By default, if you're at 0, 0, you can't go up or left, so these block walls north and east are completely overridden. You just can't walk those ways. If I use the arrows, I can move around the world. There's heaps of different stuff going on here. And as you can see down the bottom, we've got heaps of different options. We can edit the room we're standing in. We can edit the enemies of the level, the items of the level, and the player starting position. So if I quickly click R, and I click R again to edit the room details, you can see the name is bedroom, description is this. I'm not going to change it. If I press I, we can see all the items in the current room. If I press E, the current enemies. And if I press B, we can have a look at the blocked walls. All right? And I'll just use the arrow keys to change those. Anyway, quick example for you. So this enemies and this items are completely separate from the rooms. Okay. So we have a big list of enemies and items in the level. And then you add them to the different rooms. So you can use them multiple times. So you can see in my level I've got a fluffy bunny enemy, and I can edit him if I really feel like. He's a fluffy bunny with 100 health, 1 to 15 damage. I'm just going to press enter so I don't edit anything. And then I can look at the items in my level, which is a broken lamp and a shiny thing. Same sort of thing. And then we can add them to rooms and all that jazz. So it's a fairly powerful level editor to a certain extent, but there's a lot more that we could probably do. Anyway, let's have a quick look at the game. So if we go to level 0, this is what it looks like in the game. So you are currently standing it, and it's got the name of the room, the description, and then if there's any items in the room, it displays them just here. Okay. If there was any enemies in the room, it would display them just under that as well, saying something staring at you. Anyway, what we can do, if you want to see that again, you can press enter, or we can start typing into commands. So like north, we can't move that way. We can go east, currently standing on a pillow, that's fantastic. We can go west to go back to where we were. We can pick up the broken lamp. Fantastic. We can go south and there's another item. We can look at the shiny thing. Ooh, so shiny. We can actually pick it up as well. Pick up shiny thing. We can have a look at our inventory. There's our items. Um, can't move in that direction. So let's get out of this room. We're going to go east. We're standing on the bed. That's fantastic. Can we go south? Nope. Let's go east again. Standing on the carpet, lovely. Let's get out of the room, that's good. Standing outside your bedroom, you realize how small it is. Uh -huh. uh, let's go left. Let's go south. Smash through the wall. I think if we go south again, nothing there. Did I forget to put the enemy in? I think I forgot to put the enemy in. Oh, there he is. Let's kill him. So, fight. This is what a fight looks like. Player has 100 health and this. They attack for a certain amount of damage and this is what we're left with. If you keep mashing enter, that's each turn. you see it's pretty basic stuff. And Fluffy Bunny dies. And we're back in the room. There's no enemy. 
Anyway, that's pretty much all you can do in this game. Unfortunately, there's no scripting, there's no interesting item drops from enemies. This is all stuff that you could add in afterwards. So if you're still interested, I would suggest you go to the next video and we're going to start coding the game classes, which are going to be the biggest chunk of code to start with. Then the editor is going to be by far the biggest. Anyway, if you're interested in this project, please stick around. I hope to see you in the next video anyway. See you then.